I'm going to be honest, don't really know what I'm doing. He was often a player that I would buy on Football Manager. That's it's already a terrible reason. From Jon Snow, Matt puts Dan's wardrobe to shame. You know nothing, Jon Snow. Look at him, the cat that got the cream. Ian Taylor said it was the worst thing he'd ever seen in his life. Monk, really, he's, what's he, I know he's manager. What kind of thing is that? Gary Monk. Five out of ten. I know, I haven't finished yet. I cannot believe Gabby had Bonner Horseshoe. That's crazy, that's isn't terrible. it? That's terrible. Yeah, we may well have lost listeners early doors again with a long, long winded intro. Go, shoot. Hello, welcome to the Villa View podcast with Thomas Julian and myself, Dan Bardell. We're, I don't know what the word is, delirious still over the win against Birmingham City on Sunday. I actually have not stopped smiling all week. I'm chuffed. I mean, it feels ages ago since the game, and yet. Every time I see the Conor Hurrahan gif... Oh, it's or, everywhere. Yeah, uh, just uh, Jack Grealish popping up and his roar of celebration is all over social media what at the day. moment. And it, it just was unbelievable, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a brilliant day. We'll come on to the Blues game, I'm sure. I've got, I haven't heard off your mum yet about this date. So been on, I've, I've been thinking about that. She's been on holiday. Oh, 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 that's, that explains yeah, it. No, she'll, I'm sure she'll listen will to she, this. Will she be in touch, do you think? You. Yeah. Do you think? Oh, yeah. It'd be nice for us to, even if it's not a date, it'd be nice for us to go out socially, just the two of us. If you missed it last week, um, my mum said, well, she kind of offered herself, didn't she, to, to come along to the game, she, the, the Fulham game this weekend. I like to think that the game was a, a ruse to just get me out afterwards. Right. That's the way I'm... Oh yeah, you were going to go it. to the Northern Soul all Nor- night, Nor- you? Northern Soul, maybe meet Dolan and his missus at yeah. the Northern Soul Club. You'd be at home, I don't know what you'd be doing. Oh, oh you'd be your wife, I imagine. Yeah. I, I mean, don't think Andrew would be too happy with this setup, probably. It's, it's Valentine's week, isn't yeah. it? So, uh, you know, love love is in the air and all that. It is. Although Andrew's, even before, he, I mean, Andrew's not bothered by Villa, let, let's face it. Right. But even before he scored a screamer against Blues she's taken a fancy to Conor Horahan recently my wife yeah real I, fancy I, I mean I don't blame her really you he's a good looking chap oh yeah so she used to like Lansbury right she used to like Lansbury but to be fair he doesn't really play anymore. yeah I was going to say yeah. so she's she's moved on to I'd describe him as a housewife's favourite Conor Horahan I think really she's the one the young girls the young girls like uh, yeah see Grealish is too young for me but Conor Horahan he'd, you'd say he's a housewife's favourite wouldn't you uh, yeah but well, we need to get off this but it's just, still related just to say uh, I was watching I was watching the game on Sunday with my wife did she watch it she she did and I was really proud of her she was, she was watching the game and everything was going well and then at one point uh, we got a free kick up near the edge of the box and I mean it wasn't close enough but she was just like and is that what you call a penalty? Oh dear! And I was like, oh, no, we've, we've, we've watched quite a did lot. Did you of send her to her room? I, I, it was very. We were in a pub, so I couldn't. She, she did very well to watch the game, and but you know, she did didn't. She, she didn't quite feel the emotion. I don't like watching football with people that don't like football. No, I, I mean I, Hannah doesn't ask many stupid questions. That that was one, but uh, usually she she just kind of. You know, does something herself. I remember the Euros, and I was get, Andrew was out, and I was getting ready to watch the England game on my own, and that's the way I like it. Uh, on the TV, I like to watch the football on my own. Yeah, if I'm being honest. And then Andrew was like, "Oh, me and me and Ali, our friend, are coming back. We'll watch the football with you." And I was like, oh, "No." I was. I said to them, "You're not allowed to ask questions all the way through. <laughs> Did and it you're ruin not allowed to talk." You just feel like you can't be free a little mm. bit when if the shackles are on when pe- people who don't like football are watching football with you. Yeah, because you can't be rude to them, and yet at the same oh, time I, they're I asking can. stupid I questions. I can be rude. Oh, really? I, can, I can be quite rude. Yeah, well, I, I feel that in the podcast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you might have noticed. Uh, let's get on to the game then. It was. Well, a do good... I want to know what you did for Valentine's Day? Uh, I. <laughs> um, so obviously the uh, Madrid PSG was. Yeah, that's what I did. Yeah, I didn't watch that. I did. Uh, oh, you got to. <laughs> you sort yourself out. Uh, get your priorities right. Had a steak. Hannah, yep. Hannah and I cooked a steak together, which was very lovely, and then we watched Notting Hill. <laughs> Tom, Tom, Tom. Tom. I, I, I make, Dolan back next week. <laughs> <laughs> I make no apologies. It's a bloody brilliant film. It's, it's all right. Oh, that's great. It's not as good as Real Madrid v Paris Saint-Germain, though, Tom, which, no, I, which I watched. I watched the highlights this morning. My wife went and did some work in the bedroom, and oh. I... And I watched the football. How was the... Um, did you have some... Because obviously you're on the hashtag regime. Yeah. Did you have any... Did you let yourself off? No. I can't even remember what I had last night. I had some corn, I think. Corn and potatoes. I mean, I've certainly won one side of Valentine's Day. You may have won the other. I'm all about the football, mate. That's I won the football side of things, and yeah. that's the main thing. Yeah. The yeah. regime ends tomorrow, though. But it will not end. No? I'm stick to it. Yeah. I got quite a lot of compliments at Villa Park on Sunday about my thin face, which makes me think I had a real fat face <laughs> to begin with. Oh, I'd like to do it before and after. One woman even stopped me to say, oh, you look much better in person than you do in, uh, on Twitter and YouTube. I was thinking, I just said to her, that's because, probably because I've lost a stone. 
Wow. Yeah. That's good, though. Well Thanks, done. mate. You said you were going to be doing a regime, and you've not done it. Last week, I played squash, and I played football. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm very busy. Very, very you busy. Are a busy, busy boy. Uh, but let's get on to the real football, the football yeah. that mattered. It was a glorious Sunday afternoon at Villa Park. It really was. Aston Villa 2, Birmingham City 0. Talk us through it. That atmosphere, how did it feel being there? Atmosphere was electric. I like the games when they're singing before the game starts because that doesn't happen very often nowadays, but it did happen at this game. You just. There was a real. You felt like there was an expectation, and not even, not even a hope. I felt. I didn't feel nervous. I know I said this last week. I did not feel nervous really. Mm. All day again. I saw that on the uh, on the Facebook Live beforehand. You were yeah, saying you I, I just wasn't wasn't. I don't know why that is, but I just have supreme confidence in the team at the moment, and that was well founded because they we were com- we were comfortable. Obviously, they had the near miss where they hit the post, and then the guy should have stuck around. Gallagher should have stuck Gallagher, in the, stuck yeah. in the rebound, to be honest. And then you're looking at it, and you think it might be a different game. But I still think even if that had gone in, we'd have come out the second half all guns blazing. I don't think it, I don't think we get as nervy anymore. Villa, if we go behind, it's not the end of the world. There was a time a year ago, you go behind and you know the game's finished. Yeah, it's not like that now. They just the players get it at the moment. They absolutely get it, and the relationship between the fans, the players, the, the coaching staff and the managers it's just a real tight bond mm-hmm. at the moment the whole club in fact there's just a real tight bond at the moment and I'm, I'm loving going there at the moment and so from minute one you felt like Villa were in control you were yeah. you were confident obviously we saw early chances with, with Hogan and then that Snodgrass cross that Jenkinson had to kind of claw off the bar with uh, claw off the, off the line with his, with his head um, Adoma had a little snapshot as well. You know, that I just felt we were the better side. We we were dominating early doors. You mentioned the Gallagher chance, and you don't think that would have uh, that would have changed the game. I still really? think we'd have gone on to, gone on to win. Obviously, I'm not Mystic Meg, but yeah. I, I do think we would have gone on and won the game. Still, I think I still think we'd have scored those two goals in the second half. They might not have happened in the same way, mm. but I think we'd have got the goals. Two one was my prediction. As I got the first goal scorer right on fan score. I'm making a few good calls at the moment. Oh. It's a rare occasion. I made the call about Yedinak. Yeah, coming in as well, well and so that was the right call. I wanted to talk about that because you you praised yourself on uh, on Twitter about getting Yedinak that right. You also predicted that, that Gabby would be on the bench. Yeah, I got that wrong, which which he wasn't. So I did want to call you out. You know, you got to be. You can't get it all right, you, Tom. You can't get you it know. all right, as I very much well do know. Uh, let's talk about Uncle Albert's goal a little bit, which which it was it was a brilliant little bit of play, and he he drifts in, and as he does, you know, it feels so fluid. This this kind of midfield three, if you like, of of Grealish, Hurahan, and Adoma kind of coming in, and and what did you make of him? How how troublesome was he? Adoma, him? yeah. I actually don't think Adoma's on his best having his best games at the moment. Mm-hmm. I don't think he had his best games earlier on in the season. But the thing is, as as I've said about many Villa players, even if they're not having a good game. They're still contributing, and the guy's scoring goals. 14 goals this season. A few of them have been pens, I know. Yeah. But he's just been a good finisher for us yeah. this year. But actually, I don't remember him taking on too many Blues players going on going on Maisie runs, but then I think back in the first half and he picked up a knock. Yeah. And there's rumours he'll, he'll be missing on Saturday, though I'm sure, sure I saw a video of him training today. He's been struggling for a couple of weeks, I believe. He seems to keep getting knocks yeah. in early, on in early on in games. I wonder if he's playing through something. Yeah, he, might, he may well be, so yeah. that might be why we, I don't think we're seeing the best of him. But I don't care because he's putting the ball in the back of the net. Yeah, when well, he when he uh, when he just got that space and the ball ran across him, I don't know about you, where you were sitting in relation, but I was watching it on the telly. And I was in the halt, so he's right in front of me. I was like, "This is going in here." Like, I, yeah, it, it ran across him. I saw the space, and I was just like, "Yes, he's going to hit the target, and he's going to score." And lo and behold, he did. Well, there's a few nice things that I liked about that goal. Obviously, Grealish is unplayable mm-hmm. at the moment. I'm sure we'll come on. Come on to him, but I liked the fact that Horahan got like a an NBA screen assist because he just slowed <laughs> yeah. he just slowed the yeah, defender right. down so the defender couldn't get to yeah. couldn't get to a, get to a dome as quickly as he would have liked and that opened up the space for uh, a dome to get to get the shot away. So I'd I'd give Connor a screen assist. Would you? Yeah. For that one, you sometimes get that on the, on the basketball a screen assist. Do you get those? Uh, does that come in your stats? Does it? If you you get several screen I think assists, the, I don't. I don't think it comes up in the stats. I, I'm only basing this on computer game knowledge, by the way. But yeah, the, every time you do it on the NBA game on the on the PlayStation, the commentator says lovely screen assist. Well, let's go on to Connor Hurahan and his sublime finish and. You know, you said that, that that it was fairly comfortable at one nil. You're never quite comfortable because anything kind of c- could happen. But, but again, I still felt comfortable yeah, at one nil. No, you're totally right. But 
At the same time, anything can happen. Conor Hurahan, you see it. He take he takes a touch, and that volley, it's just unbelievable. It's I could watch. Lovely. I could watch it for days. I t- I'm telling you, as soon as he he hit that, you, the whole end knew it was in. Yeah. They were they were up before he hit the back of the net. The keeper was scrambling back. Yeah, no, I didn't didn't write Stockdale no, at all. I thought he was. I thought he was supposed to be one of the league's better keepers, but, and his distribution was supposed to be good. But quite old let's now. Not, let's now. not talk about him. Yeah. Anyway. He's obviously gone to Blues for the money because he could have been playing Premier League with Brighton. Could he? Yeah, he could have stayed at Brighton. He would have been on the bench, though. Probably. No, he was going to be their first choice. They only signed a new keeper. Let's not talk not about him. Not a Premier League keeper. Let's not talk about him anyway. But yeah, he just knew it was going in as soon as soon as, it, as soon as he hit it. And I saw someone's... I've likened it to Thomas Hitzelsberger because he just, he just knew as soon as he hit it, he was going in. I saw someone on Twitter called him... De ha- oh, what did they call him? De Hora Hammer. I lied, oh, I, lied nice. that. I lied to that one I can't remember who said that it was a really really good nickname though but yeah it just reminded me of his goal a little bit against Blues when he was at Villa because right. as soon again as soon as he hit it you knew it was going in they're similar players mm-hmm. in 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 some ways Hitzelsberger and Horahan but he'd be probably be the first to admit he didn't have his best game he, he wasn't off the pace or anything he just did, so a few things he was trying weren't coming off he, he wasn't having his best game but as I keep saying even when players aren't having the best game, they're contributing, and he does he does a lot defensively as well. I think he was the one who closed down for us to get the throw in, from which Odoma scored off right. as well. But I just think that midfield's perfect at the moment. There's no need to change the four. The anchor man can rotate, mm-hmm. but the other four, their feet, they play every week at yeah. the moment. But you, such a good goal. You talk about Hurahan maybe being off the pace a little bit and not not. No, I didn't say he was off the pace. I just think he wasn't having his best game, right. which can happen. Yeah, well, of course it can, and I think. Even more so when you, uh, you're exactly right with those front four. When you've got all of them firing on all cin- cylinders, they can't all be the lead man every no. week, you know. So it's perfect that they seem to be, especially Hurahan and, and Grealish, seem to have this kind of connection where one one goes forward, one one just sits back a little bit. They interchange. They 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 they're in perfect synchronicity. Is that a word? It's is certainly that synchronization, is. not the word. Synchronicity. Mm, I like I'm synchronicity. not sure about that. Let us know in the comments <laughs> if, if that is a but word. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I do know what you mean. But I saw there was a few things about people saying is he contributing enough? Should he should he be changed? Oh, Why would you change that team? Why would you change that midfield? That midfield is working perfectly. If you take a key component out of that midfield and put someone else in, it will affect the other three who are playing so well with that fourth player so you don't change anything mm-hmm. unless you have to yeah. through injury because it's, it's just perfect at the, at the moment I mean I'm not saying he's been scapegoated because he, he isn't being scapegoated at all or Hannah now he scored against Blues you won't hear a bad word said yeah, about him yeah, ever ever again Yeah, Pro- probably but pe- I think people are always looking to, to pick faults and at the moment I don't think there is a fault that you can pick with this Villa side we've just won seven in a row mm. I don't think that's ever happened since I've been going down Villa Park. Why would you? Why would you change anything? Let's just let's just be happy. I think it was nineteen ninety. I was. I don't think I was going down at five. Yeah, but, exactly. But I was born. Yeah, yeah. I was. Yeah, I was just about born. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, we go seven and seven. I think it's, it's been uh, quite well documented this week. That'd be nineteen seventy five. The last time we went uh, uh, eight and eight, rather, that'd be nineteen seventy five, and we went up that year. Big ask so. to get that eighth at Fulham. They're yeah. very, very good at home. Well, we'll come on to that. A little bit more. Uh, Robert Snodgrass, again, I felt like Robert Snodgrass was battling throughout that game. He really epitomised what it meant to play in a derby for me. He was he was getting in little scraps with people. He was beating people on the outside, on the inside. And he, he almost should have had a goal right at the end there where he yeah. pulled it wide. Only dry foot. That would have, for me, just summed up a brilliant performance by him. Oh, yeah, the more goals we can score against... Well, the more goals we can score against anyone, yeah. the better. But certainly the more goals we can score against Birmingham the better but again he hasn't scored Snodgrass did he get, I don't think he got he didn't get I, I don't, I'm not sure who got I don't think anyone got the assist for the horror hand goal did they just bounced up and he uh, yeah I don't think so and he, hit, a... and he hit it yeah. but people also don't realise the amount of defensive work that midfield are, are doing the wingers Get make the fullbacks' life for Villa so e- not easy. Make it easier. Yeah, because well, they, they work d- together. They just do so much defensive work. Yeah. The fullbacks and Horahan and Grealish. I mean, Grealish's work rate. I think Horahan's work rate's been up there all season, and his defensive games come on leaps and bounds. As I, as I've said all, all all season, or certainly all through the last two months. But Grealish as well. He doesn't half work hard now. People always used to look at him as a bit of a, a luxury player. Which I, I, I still think he used to put it in, but not to the level he's, he's putting in now. But the, the kid's a beast. 
He's, at the moment, Endoy, the, the NBA player in the middle of the park for, for Birmingham City. Yeah. He just looked like he'd been pl- plonked in the middle of the pitch as a, as a basketballer to just mark, mark Grealish, but he couldn't live with him. I've said it before, Grealish's injury, uh, although, what, although it was terrible, it, it, it's given him a chance, I think, to reflect on his game. And, and he's come back from it so much stronger. And like you say, he, he did work hard, but now you can see there's a different level. And it's also a case of working not just harder, but in a different way, yeah. more, more effective way. And yeah, knowing when to work. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right there. I mean, it's a good sign when someone who's seven foot eight is bouncing off you when they, and can't catch you. Well, let's talk about Ndoy for a second. He obviously was sent off at the end of the game, and it was a really... It was a really stupid moment, and he ends up. Uh, I think he's he's kind of rolling his boot over Yedinak on the floor, and John Terry kind of comes in, and Doy, for one reason or another, ends up with his uh, with his hand round Terry's throat, and John Terry's just like standing him down, and just like you don't want to do. Just this. thinking you were a moron. But I just thought it was a brilliant moment of and a, a real sure sign of John Terry's captaincy and his leadership there that he won. Yednak's on the floor, so immediately he's protecting one of his other players. But he's the one that, even though he's got a uh, he's got his throat caught in and Doy's giant fist, he's calm. He, he's like, right, this is the end of the game. Let's because get let's get this done. Yeah, he and that's is. where Endoy's stupid because the game's lost and, and you've now got yourself banned. And now What's the point? The, uh, Birmingham are playing Millwall, I think, and and that's a massive game for them. And, Come on, Millwall. You know he's going to be Endoy. He's a he's a big lump. But he's a, a big player he's for someone him. you'd want in that game certainly right so against Millwall although I did think he was pretty useless I've got to be honest yeah I, I, I think so I think but I think that was part of Villa's quality like Birmingham just didn't have the, the ability to live with with that midfield that midfield five did you say the the Twitter picture of like uh, again I can't remember who posted it apologies of some dad saying, have to make some notes. saying some, no I can't be doing that <laughs> some dad was like there's, there's some moments that happen where you're just really proud of your kids, and he took took a, a photo of his uh, of his lad just flicking the finger oh. as, as Indoy was walking off the pitch. It was, it was great. Oh man! But you just need you've got yourself banned when a game's already lost. Yeah, you've just lost your head. Yeah, in the last minute, it's I, I felt a bit like it's almost like he's trying to. He was trying to endear himself to the Blues fans by showing a bit of passion. Yeah, at the end of the game because they've been. We we outclassed them for sure. Yeah. But I'll tell you what, we didn't we outbattled them as well. Yeah. Which hasn't always been the case in the Derby games. There's been games we've won where I'd I'd say we probably haven't outbattled them, but we outbattled them. Every play, every player knew what that game meant for Aston Villa. And that's what I loved about Snodgrass. It felt like he'd played in in half a dozen second yeah. city derbies, you know. And and he loves it here. He loves yeah, it here. Absolutely. And no, it was brilliant to see. You're absolutely right. How does it rank for you in terms of derby wins, do you think? The five ones always at the top. Yeah. That was just a that was just a great day. It's up there. It's probably in the top three. The other one that stands out is the one that, where Cahill scored that uh, acrobatic. Yeah, I don't know what to call it. Scissor kick. It was brilliant. Bicycle kick. I watched that again earlier yeah, today. That was brilliant. That was he's in the top three. Such a well it's just because we're playing so well at the moment as well. That's yeah. the other thing. It's just coming at, at a good time. Well, you've you've raised a good point there with with Cahill's bicycle kick. Dave Alford and Brad fifteen seventy four favorite derby goal. Considering we're talking about uh, the brilliant finish by Connor Hurhan, I put Cahill. It was his first and only goal for Villa. Was it? Yeah, the only goal. That's that's uh, only league goal certainly. Um, uh, I did like Hitz's goal, yeah. but unfortunately we, that put us 2-0 up and we ended up drawing 2-2, so that takes the shine off that one, but I did really enjoy that, and again that was similar, the roof felt like it was going to come off right. when Horan scored, and it was a bit like that with Hitz's yeah. as well. It's definitely up there. I guess if I, at the end of the season, if I look back and we've gone up, it'll probably be number one, but right. at the time that Cahill goal was the winner, and it... We were in relegation trouble at the, at the time, and that probably sent Blues down and kept us up that game. So the KO one's probably first at the moment, but that can always change. It's such a good goal. Yeah, I have written again, Hurahan's was class. Oh, but it's lovely. To, to finish that. Lovely. I do like the de, de Hammer. That's good. The Hammer. Very, very good. Uh, Tom, Wish I thought of that myself. <laughs> Tom Cowley says, describe it, the win in three words. Uh, still smiling now. Oh, very nice. I've gone for delighted, confident, relieved. Because it's one of those, it, you've you got to win it. You, and oh. At this stage of the season, you, you, I mean, you've got to try and win them all, obviously. But it, it could have been a tough one. It could have been like a, an ugly one-all draw, but Villa just outclassed Birmingham. And, they, and Johnston didn't make a save all game. I know they hit the woodwork a couple of times, but I don't remember Johnston making a save. No. So we were pretty comfortable. And Steve Cottrell said as much 
after the game. Mm. To be fair, I thought he took the defeat quite gracefully, graciously. Actually, I think it's worth a word about Steve Bruce. Actually, at this at that. this stage, yeah, seeing his, uh, I can't remember which goal it was when he nearly burst into tears when we scored. It was it just a second. Yeah. Puts football into con- context, really. A fair play to him for being there because he's obviously going through a horrible, horrible time. And fair play to the rest of the coaching staff as well for preparing Villa without the gaffer. Yeah, being being there. But so if you're if you're unaware, Steve Bruce lost his father the week before uh, the the second City derby, which is obviously horrible at any time. But considering it's the biggest weekend in your calendar, um, it's a it's a massive strain, and un, you can't even imagine it. I don't think unless you've been in a similar situation. Yeah. Absolutely huge, and yeah, for for the whole of Villa the Villa team the coaching staff and 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 leadership, like you say, to to rally round and and produce such a result is. Unbelievable. Yeah, and I think the players were galvanised anyway. But there was a bit of a sense of this one's for you. Yeah, Gaffer. And I like that. I like it's a good, very good togetherness. Yeah, absolutely. in the squad at the moment. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about uh, Kev J raised the point? Do you see the um, the Birmingham City shirt that was on the floor? Yeah, well, in the turnstiles. What do, what do you think? Kev says, "Are we better than that?" Did... I don't really have any thoughts on it. No. In all honesty, I've seen it. It's a bit of, I suppose it's seen as a bit of... A bit of banter. A bit of fun, a bit of bit of banter, but then I guess if you look at it the other way and they were doing that, we'd be saying, oh, small time. Yeah. So I get what, why people don't like it, but then again, I can also get why people do like it. To me, it feels like an easy way to get a viral video, doesn't it? And Maybe it's, it, it's, that. It's a bit of fun, but yeah, I, I kind of feel the same as you. I just don't really care. Like, if you want to do it, good stuff. Would a lot. There's always a risk you do things like that and then you lose, yeah. but then I suppose the video doesn't come out Yeah. if you lose. Yeah. That's fair enough. Uh, David Hunt says, It was a pleasure to watch the game on Sunday. Bruce has proved me wrong, playing so well with the freedom uh, the freedom to play as well. Jack Grealish was quality and doesn't get enough credit outside of Villa for his vision and passing. Um, is he caught up in the Brit- British mentality that because he's fouled all the time, he's, he's accused of diving a little bit? I don't think he's a diver, Grealish. He tries to stay on his feet, well, that, the if one anything. Last week, where it was a blatant penalty oh, and he didn't get it. That's just championship referees. Actually, I must mention the referee. Yeah. I thought the ref was decent. On Sunday, he kind of let the game flow. He didn't get his first yellow card out too early, yeah. although he probably could have. I think Horahan could have got booked for a tug back right. in the first half. There was a couple of iffy blues ones as well, but generally he let the game flow. He understood that it was a derby. I don't know if he's refed any of our other games. I don't even know his name. That was one of the better refereeing performances I've seen at Villa Park. Mm. I wish I could tell you his name, no. but I can't. Not in the notes. It's not in my it's extensive. Surprise, uh, there's a, th- a thousand pages there, Tom, and you've <laughs> not got it in the notes. Best. Do you want to go onto the championship table can do. Uh, for I just a little love bit? Love looking at that table. Feels weird being pleased with being second in the championship, not first, but I'd take second right now. The last couple of months have been just unbelievable, really. Oh, last month, really? Oh, no, I suppose it's a couple of months now. Yeah, you're yeah. right. I mean, when you look at December, I still think about that podcast we did just after Christmas after we'd lost to Brentford and me and you were... It was not... We did not enjoy doing that podcast and talking about it. No, it was... And then awful. since then, it's been nothing but glee. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, uh, Wolves won again. They beat uh, Queen's Park Doing Rangers. Right, Wolves. Yeah, so they, they're they back into form, aren't they? They're three wins on they're the bounce go, They're now. not going anywhere. It'd be nice to beat them at Villa Park still, but I don't think... Well, we ain't catching them. Yeah, so they're 71 points uh, at the top of the table. Villa in second on 59. You've got Derby County have had a terrible week. Uh, they drew with Norwich one all on Saturday and then lost to Cardiff 2-0. Which no, they didn't is... lose to Cardiff. They lost to... Uh, they lost Sheffield to Sheffield, Sheffield Wednesday. Wednesday. Sorry. Cardiff won. Yeah, much better. Um, uh, so they're third. Uh, point behind Villa. Uh, same as Cardiff, who beat Bolton. Uh, Game in hand for Villa, though. Yeah. The good thing is that it doesn't take the pressure off, obviously. They've not got a game in hand over, over Cardiff, just over Derby. Derby uh, played one more than everyone else. Oh, OK, but... the if we don't win that game in hand, can Card- yeah, Cardiff can take us. Yeah, because they're, they're annoying me as well. They're sticking around. Cardiff. They are. Yeah, they've they've had a little wobble, but they're they're kind of back. They haven't lost in their last five. Fulham and Bristol City make up the rest of the playoffs. Fulham are table. well on the rise, unfortunately. Yeah, both on fifty-two points, so still seven points off Villa. But obviously, we take on Fulham at Craven Cottage on Saturday. So another massive game for Villa. Fulham actually have a a huge. Um, Four weeks coming up. I think they, they play. They play or well, six weeks. They play six, the six of the top eight in their next games. It's ridiculous. I think they tend to blow away most teams. Well, most of the lesser teams at home. They're a good. They're a good attacking team. Fulham. They've got a lot of speed and cr- creativity. I say that the athleticism of their squad is possibly better than ours. Yeah. Fulham, but I don't think their defence is great, and our defence is. So I think that could be that could be the key. Their defence can be got out, and I think they overplay. They. 
they've scored, I think, the second most amount of goals in the championship. They've got a, a good side. They've got a very creative very midfield as well. Well, that's a good player. They had a terrible uh, start to the season, didn't they? And that's why they find themselves only in fifth, I think, because if they if they didn't, then they'd be up with us and maybe a little well, bit Well, they ahead. did the same last season. They yeah. came a bit from nowhere. Yeah, and I think right. we might have spoke about this last week, actually. That was, I think, again, I think I said this last week. Oh, they were my team that I thought would win the league this year. Mm-hmm. On paper, I looked at their team and thought, yeah, they've got a good manager, good team. But we've beat them at Villa Park, so there's no reason why we can't beat, can't beat them at Craven Cottage, although I think I've been five times and we've lost every single time. Well, maybe my mum will come with you and then you'll be okay. Fingers crossed. Well, they did. Uh, they drew one all with Bolton at the weekend, so that was a massive result for, for Villa. Uh, we'll see how we get on. Yeah, that makes me that. think, obviously. That was, was that at Craven Cottage? No, that was it. Uh, uh, was it at Bolton? Reebok. Is it still the Reebok? No, it's changed. It's not, it yeah. was the Macron. I think it's even changed from that now. Was it? Yeah, I don't know what it's called. Still in the dark ages. Yeah. Uh, we will do a preview for that game, so make sure you check that one out as well. We'll talk a little bit more about that. Uh, but I will mention Clunk Click on Twitter. He says, would you play Yeti or Thor for uh, for Saturday's game? Thor. I'd change you? it again. You go back? Yep, makes sense. As I said, they're a dynamic, athletic side. Kind of game, Yeti and won't find as comfortable as he did on that certain games for certain players horses for courses I don't know is that, does that make sense that's a, that's yeah. a phrase yeah. so Blues game as, as I said last week ideal for Yednak and it was ideal for him and he made a real difference being in there Fulham game you need a bit more energy be honest in there for me you change it Wow. I would definitely change it. I think I'm on the other side of the fence. Well, you were on the other side of the fence last week. I'm always on the other side of the fence. On the wrong side. <laughs> yeah, I was. Well, kind of. Uh, I definitely was on the on the wrong side of the Yeti or Thor debate. But yeah, I, I he he did so well to allow Hurahan and, and Grealish to that that freedom. Yeah. And I kind but of the think, same thing will happen with be honest. But you need somebody who's gonna who's really strong defensively. I still worry a little bit about Bjarnson's defensive capabilities. Played really well, there's no doubt about that. But is is Fulham a, a free flowing attacking team the right game for Bjarnson? I'm not sure. But I don't think it's the right game for Yetinak. The legs. But you could always take him off. If you, he gives everything for sixty minutes. And then you bring on Whelan who's I'd rather look, I'd look at it the other way maybe and bring on Yednak to try and shore things up if you're winning. A little bit late on in the game when teams go a bit more direct. I'd maybe look at it that way. I think Fulham will go direct anyway. I think well, no, they have all, they're down the flanks. But there are fullbacks overlapping, wingers they, getting into like the box. It's not like they're going to sit back. And, no, no, they'll and play. They, they'll come and play. I just think it suits Bjarnason because they've got an energetic side. That's mm. my that's my opinion. Well, we shall see. The only thing could be is that if Adoma is out, Bjarnason could well find himself on the left of midfield. Because there isn't really anyone else to play there, I wouldn't think. Gray Green. He's not really not, not ready to it's chuck a big right one to in. chuck him straight. He, he needs some runs like run outs off the bench first. Mm-hmm. Our bench was a bit defensive again on Sunday. I wasn't too keen on the on the bench. Mm. Could have done with one more attacking option. He obviously it hasn't mattered. If that's all we've got to moan about, then fine. Yeah. But I just think you've got Yednak in the team, you've got Twan Zebi who's there as centre back cover but can play the anchor man role. You've got Bjarnason on there. I've just said Bjarnason, you've got Bjarnason. You don't need Whelan on there as well. Yeah. I don't think mm. for for that game you could give yourself a bit more of an attacking option. That's why I thought Gabby would be on the bench, just, or even just Davis on there as well, just in case things are going wrong. Yeah, that was a shame. I feel like kind he's of had Dave- good, he's had a good season, good breakthrough season, Davis, but it's looking like he's down the pecking order now, third choice striker he, at the moment. He tweeted straight after the game, didn't he? he? Said like, "Well done to the lads," all that oh, kind yeah. of stuff. I felt I feel a little bit sorry for him that I mean, obviously he had that run. Where we were playing really well, then he kind of went off the boil a little bit, and and Hogan took his chance. Now to be out of the team completely, obviously Graben came on. Graben looked good actually. Uh, he, he, he looked yeah. lively when he came on. That's that like, bodes well. And this we talked about this in the podcast. I think he was a good signing because he doesn't need the minutes so much, and he's he's a good alternative uh, to to bring on. And he knows that he's got to fight for his place anyway. But it does feel like Davis has, has kind of just kind of been knocked off yeah. the, the the bench a little bit like a, a new one's come in everyone's just bumped up and, and there was room for both on the bench or there was room for Gabby on the bench on, on Sunday mm. I think I don't think we need that many defensive minded players mm. on the bench but as I say if that's all we've got to complain about then great any more for any more on I just want to say although he didn't score I thought Hogan had a, I thought I'd have maybe had Hogan down as man of the match really he just set the tone okay. from the front. He worked so hard. He upset upset them a few times by closing down early, and he was just he had a really good game without scoring. I thought his link up play was was better than it has been as well. I'm a big a big fan of his, real big fan of his, and he even got in and made a slide tackle. 
at one at one point. I just think he played really well. He was he, he reminded me of Craig Bellamy. He was just a pest. Yeah. And I always wanted Villa to have someone like Craig Bellamy because he was horrible, li- horrible little player, but a good player. Yeah. And if Hogan can add that to his game as well, then great. Yeah. Yeah, I, I really liked Snodgrass. Snodgrass was one of my favourite players on, on Sunday. I mean, I agree he's getting out of the match. I don't think we could have, again, yeah, I don't think he, too many complaints. He was really annoyed. I don't know if you could see from where you are, but but coming off, you could see he was visibly frustrated because he wanted that goal. He'll and get it. He, of, of course he will. At some point, will. if he stays. Yeah, I'm sure he will stay. He, but loves, he loves Villa. He, uh, you could see he came off and Steve Bruce gave him a big hug and everything, but you could see he was just like, ah. Oh. The game was kind of there for another goal and it was... It was it was obviously her hand that got it in the end, but uh, yeah, it just it, you could tell that he wanted to be there and be the man that scored. I that did one. think he was going to do it. I got me, I got my hopes up that he was going to yeah. going to make his dream <laughs> c- come true. Feel a good connection with Grealish. To be fair, the uh, only thing I can liken it to is when Ian Taylor was playing. Mm. Like it's just a genuine Villa fan doing well for the club that he loves, and you feel like it's exactly how you'd be if you were out there. So yeah. I forgot, I forgot real affect, affection for him because I know that he loves loves the club. And I just I did want to see him make his childhood dream come true. But as I say, plenty of time for that to happen. Well, actually, they might not be. They might go down to League One and we might go up and then we never play him again. I think. Uh, well, yeah, no, you're not wrong. Um, Maybe that's why he was annoyed. I, I'm going to put this one to you because I think it, it fits in. Sultana King says, "If you had uh, the end of year award ceremony today for the best player, who would win the award?" I think a Doma would win it. I don't think he'd get my vote. I'd probably, I'd, I'd, I'd prob- again, I feel like I'm waxing lyrical about everyone. Chester was great. Yeah. I don't know if you saw his stats. I haven't got them in front of me, but his stats after the game, he didn't lose a single battle. Chester, I've, I, I did a tweet after after the game just saying he's an elite, an elite defender at this level. James Chester, he's a defensive expert, champion, championship level. He's a Premier League player. Mm. Chester, you look at I look at some of the teams that have finished top ten or around mid table the last few years, like Bournemouth, for example, and I look at their defence and I just think someone like James Chester is better than the centre backs mm-hmm. they have. We're very, very lucky, lucky to have him. He had, he had he's always puts himself in in the right place, and obviously he doesn't get as many plaudits because we've got John Terry now, yep. who's obviously the bigger the bigger name, and he gets a lot of the plaudits. But John Terry would say. I think he has said on Instagram what what a player James mm. Chester is. Such a good defender. And I think you could also put into that conversation Sam Johnston as well. He'd be he'd get my vote, Johnston. Yeah, he's, at the moment he's saved us a couple of times, literally. Yeah, um, yeah really good. Who'd player. get your vote? I, well, I just said Sam Johnston. Oh, does he get yours? I oh, think we, so. we, we agree on something. Yeah, I think so. I'd like. I, it feels to me like all the midfield four have had flashes. Obviously, a Doma should be in the, in that category. Fourteen goals is a, pr- a very good return for yeah, a winger. But you've got Snodgrass, who's played really well uh, recently. Connor Hurahan, who's who's led the line in that kind of October November period, I think it was, where he was scoring all our goals. Grealish, who's come back from a long injury and is now playing out of his skin. You, you've got all these players who who have shown, have come together and shown at different times. But I feel like Sam Johnston has always put it in. I think Johnston, Chester, and Adoma would be the top three at the mo- at the moment. Mm. I there's an argument for Hutton to be up there mm. as well. It's good good to see because a few years ago, I mean, last few years we haven't even been able to hold a Player of the Year ceremony because yeah. we've just been so garbage. Yeah. This year we'll be able to hold one with our hands held hands held high, heads held high. Whatever yeah, ha- whatever happens, I think I think there'll be and there'll be a few contenders. There's there's an argument for five or six of them. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Uh, did you read the Steve Brown interview on AVFC? Oh, yeah. Paul Brown knows I love them. Yeah, I love the big interview. It was a big interview as well, wasn't it? Was it? Good. Yeah, if you have learned, learned a lot, I learned. I like them. I learned stuff that I didn't know. I didn't know Eastick had come in as, yeah. a, as a coach. That's a good. That's a good. Good coup. Yeah, coup the right word. Coup. Yeah, yeah, coup's the right word. Be confident in your I always think it's coop. No, I always want to say coop, but that's how it's spelt, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's a it's big, not... big coup getting him in. He's worked a lot um, with with England. Again, it's a football manager analogy, but he's someone I always used to get in on football manager as a coach. Is good he? scores. Yeah. yeah, good scores on football manager. Oh, fair enough. If you haven't read it yet, it's on avfc.co.uk. Uh, read it. Read yeah, it? Yeah. yeah I mean, have you got any bullet points about it? Yeah, of course I have. Oh, of I've course. Got um, yeah, so uh, he is, of course, the director of football, if you if you weren't aware of that. And I, I, I thought some of the most interesting parts were about the financial fair play. Obviously, we've we've kind of skirted around it a little bit because we don't know too much about it but uh, Steve Brown was talking about how 
the whole of the new kind of senior leadership at, at Aston Villa has been shackled really by the in the past three transfer windows because of the old regime and they it took them a long time to balance those books and now we he says that we're in profit and and that we shouldn't be worrying about financial fair play because actually we're we're far and away in the moving in the right direction I don't think many people are worried about it. But we get, I mean, you see the Twitter, we get questions about it all the time. I think I don't think they're worried about it. I think it's the unknown. I think because it's quite a complicated and a new system, people are a bit like, oh, financial fair play, oh, parachute payments. Oh, it's, it's, it's a lot of vocabulary that people actually probably don't know how to break down. I don't know how to break it down. Exactly. But Keith Warner said a few weeks ago that we passed it. That was good, that was good enough for me. Mm. The accounts have come out today and they're not the disaster that some people are port- portraying. Mm. So I don't think there's anything to, anything to worry about. Yep. Good. Yeah. Uh, he also talked about uh, recruitment improving, uh, and obviously under his time and when they brought in Steve Bruce. Now that they can recruit people that that Bruce and Brown both want, has the final say. Yeah, he said that um, he knew Steve Bruce obviously before. Um, yeah, before Steve Bruce was appointed, where he would know him from. I guess Maybe they just, just move in football, football circles. Football circles. Yeah. yeah. Um, and and therefore they share the same philosophy and that really helps when when everybody's singing from the same song sheet you know the 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 process becomes that much smoother yeah. I, I wanted to look a little bit and, and talk about any outstanding certainly good buys but a couple of bad buys as well Gosh, I, you're gonna think i'm picking on you and that i'm picking forwards with your list go on but i don't think three of those were made when round was there i don't think oh, round came uh, in until after the, trans- the first uh, transfer window so yeah I was so, looking those, at that. so those won't be there horahan was definitely bought when yeah. round was there mm. but i don't think mccormack tishibola and adoma were a peek behind the curtain i did want to have a a, a date check and i ran out of time oh, tom oh, well, the trouble is now people know that you've got it wrong yeah I wasn't doing it in a malicious way this no, time. No, I know. I wanted to save you wasting... This time. I wanted this to, time. I, I, wanted to, it is. I wanted to save you wasting time Saying to say things. something that wasn't right. Yeah, fair yeah. enough. Is there any buys in particular that stand out to you during Root Round and, and Bruce's tenure that, that, that really stand out as quality buys? Or that you can see Bruce's kind of... Apart from Terry, obviously, the, the Bruce... Terry is the one player. that stands out. Yeah. It's a free, tra- free transfer and he's revolutionised the place and revolutionised the dressing room I believe yeah for me it feels a bit like we've used the, the loan market really well yeah Snodgrass is a great loan signing that, that signing doesn't happen without Bruce yeah. like, Snodgrass and, could play in the Prem well and I think people are forgetting now that we're, we've got Grealish back that Onoma was a really handy player in, the, in the early part of the season I talk about I mean he's not he's not been so good when he has played recently but when you look back to that QPR game away that me and you went to I thought he absolutely ran the show yes, he had certainly. such a good game and it, I think the, he was a bit. He got a bit unsettled by the talk that he might be getting recalled by Spurs. Maybe that unsettled him a little bit. But he can't argue with not being in the team at the moment. Yeah, I don't think he. I mean, there was the Derby away game which I was at, and he was hung out to dry playing as a false nine. That mm. wasn't him. He shouldn't be playing. Actually, I think he actually wants to play deeper. I think he'd be better deeper. On Amir as well, but he's going to face a battle to get back into that team. To be honest, now isn't he? Yeah. But yeah, I think recruitment's. Been good. It was the it was before round in round was in the players you've got down there where yeah. you could question the recruitment. Although obviously we got Chester and Yedinak in that and Codger in that first win, window, so you could say maybe it was a bit scattergun mm. before round became involved. Yeah, but then you think as well we did have a lot of work to do. The squad was in disarray Tatters. when we got relegated. We, yeah. They needed major surgery, and that's not easy to do. Yeah, well that's it. I think I think part of it is that we've. We've been dealing with the fallout from that scattergun approach, if you like, where you're right. Not it's not necessarily even before that it was scattergun. Yeah, but there's been so much to fix that that Round and and Bruce and and the rest of the staff now are finally getting it to the into the shape that they want it to be. I really like this quote uh, from the interview. It says the Villa engine mirrors that industrious mentality. Players who give everything to play for Aston Villa and give everything to ensure Aston Villa is successful. That's starting to become ingrained now at the training ground. Yes, our, true. Our you co- can see sorry, our one more. Well. Sorry. Our coaches do not accept mediocre standards. We don't let our uh, we don't let out play we don't let our players get away with having a poor attitude and uh, I know what you're about to say you can see it you see it on the pitch yeah it's it's there and it's, you can see when we score they nearly every, well pretty much everyone is celebrating together the whole team's there in our, in arms together it's perfect it's what we wanted and I'm going to bring us up something now that I told you I was going to bring up before the podcast two years ago we were getting thumped six 0 at home to Liverpool and players were tweeting pictures of sports cars to take to take the mic. I mean, he's been Jolly on's been on Twitter again, 
tonight. I can't remember exactly what he said. If you if you fill a bit of time, well, I'll find it. He does my editing. Jolie and Lescott, obviously, if you're uh, if you're a new Villa fan, then he's then not a Villa fan. I'm not having it. He no, can't, he can't be a Villa fan. If oh, you're sorry. a new Villa oh, fan, sorry. Sorry, sorry. I get all right. Yeah, you do. Your, your blood is boiling. If you're a new Villa fan, uh, Julian Lescott, he's claimed to be a Villa fan for a, for a long time. Not it. Never signed for Villa. Signed for West Brom and other people, and demanded quite a lot of money. And and that was a long-standing reason why why he never made it to the club, amongst other reasons. And then celebrate. And he used to celebrate like he'd won £10 million every time he scored against us and real, really dig the fans. Well, I'm sure the fans probably did used to sing nasty songs about him. He was in one of the worst Villa teams, certainly of our And he was one fans. of the main reasons that defence was so poor. He's put a tweet out tonight saying, or yesterday, saying, amazing how many people want to give up chocolate sweets, biscuits and dessert, like stuff for Lent. But not as many trying to give up social media. The guy needs to come off Twitter. He's trying to lie and say that that picture of a sports car that he tweeted was an accident. The amount of steps that that phone would have had to have gone through in his pocket to let to get that tweet out, um, unbelievable. It's just it's just fabrication. He's done it to take the mick, and he, all he did was take the mick when he was at Villa. It's ridiculous. The whole thing was a mess, and it was a horrible time to be a Villa fan. And I'm glad those darker days are are beyond us because uh, exactly it's, it's perfect. Like, you look at the you look at someone like John Terry, who's achieved more than Lescott's ever achieved. A better defender than Lescott ever was. You look at how he's handled being at Villa and you saw his celebrations yeah. after the game, like it genuinely meant something to him. Lescott saying he's a Villa fan, I didn't see anything that no. that showed that the club meant anything to him other than the fact he was earning a load of money. The way John Terry carries himself now is is exactly the reason that I think if, even if we do go up, he might he might stay with us. It's I know just talk now, isn't there, of the extra year. But this is, the, this is what Steve Round has been saying, this is what the it feels like at the club that everybody even the fans like that whole atmosphere around Villa Park has, has changed beyond comparison with, with two or three years ago yeah. and, and John Terry is part of that and he's leading that in, in a certain sense and and he's, he, he feeds off that he had that for so long at Chelsea where he was the main man now he's the main man at Villa I, I wouldn't be surprised if we see him in a Villa shirt next season in the Premier League Hopefully, he'd still definitely do a job in the Premier League. As I've said, there's some absolute garbage centre backs yeah. in the Premier League. And the one, garbage. the one uh, knock against Terry was that we didn't know whether he was going to be able to stay fit. Obviously, he had that freak injury, but actually that was from throwing himself into something. Exactly, into that it, it's not injury. like it, it's not a um, a kind of uh, from playing too many games or whatever no, like that. He's, he's been a revelation. Yeah, uh, I think he's enjoyed it more than he probably thought he would have done. Because let's face it, he took a risk. Yeah coming to Villa he's been at Chelsea his whole career he had no reason to really come to Villa he could have gone and played in the Premier I mean, I know he didn't want to play against Chelsea which would be interesting if we do go up and he does stay what would happen no, but he didn't have to come to Villa he didn't need to but he did and he's I saw a tweet from Chelsea fans saying like the John Terry celebrations at the end of the game saying not one Chelsea player has done anything like that all season yeah. we miss him they'd have, they'd have him in their team now in a crisis they'd want him in the trenches with them I saw a tweet that um Sunday's game was the biggest home yes. crowd John Terry's ever played Space against volumes. because Villa Park is bigger than Stamford Bridge so yeah. uh, and and he loves that as well that's part of the the allure that that brought him to Villa Park obviously the relationship with Bruce but the chance to win um I mean we're not going to win the championship but to to get promoted another challenge he I mean he could have gone to China he, if he was a different person he could have gone America to America and had a really nice life in the sun. yeah instead he's Chesham Birmingham every snow. time I drive back for Villa it rains yeah Every time, there's without a, fail. There's a story in the Birmingham Mail. It's not really a story so much, but they've, they've documented John Terry's earnings. Do you think anyone cares about that? I don't care about stuff like that. I certainly don't. Where he's getting paid at the moment, he's earning it. Yeah, he's, he's not like he's not putting it in, is he? There's a lot of people at Villa Park who certainly aren't earning it and still getting paid the same amount over over a longer space of time. Yeah, he's been everything I, I wanted him to be, John Terry and more. Mm. And I've said to Paul Brown, I want the next big interview to be John Terra. Yeah. I want to know what he I want to know what he, he thinks and what it's like been like for him changing teams after all these years and how he's found Villa. I really want to know I'm interested. How many do they do one a month a big interview? Yeah, something like that. I mean they don't want to do too many. They don't want to do any more than what they're doing because then it takes the shine off it when yeah. he does come but I'd like really like to hear from John Terra. Really like to hear. Uh let's talk a little bit about Albert Adoma's aim. Have you did you see this in the Express and Star? No, you really uh, you go through everything here, you don't know, you? Can't. I'm pretty thorough and unless I get something wrong. Oh, I did say this actually. I did say this. Uh, Adoma said we're still quite a distance from Wolves uh, but anything is possible our aim is to catch them so 12 points uh, behind Wolves 15 games to play we've talked about it a little bit before Dan 
Is there any chance that we catch them? I don't see it happening. The fact is we've won seven games in a row and we're still nowhere near them. Yeah. So I just don't see us catching them. They've, they've done a good job, to be fair. They could have took their foot off the pedal a bit and they, and they haven't. Well, they they had, have, they've had their A couple of dodgy wobble. results, but yeah. that's going to happen. Yeah. But they've, got, they've won the last three, I think. Yeah. But they're... No, we're not. I, I don't see us getting them, but it's good. To, I think Adoma said this in the interview. If they aim for it and they don't get it, if they aim for it, they might get second. Yeah. So I think that's the right attitude. That's exactly right, isn't it? You you keep chasing the guy that's ahead of you, and even if you don't catch him, you're going to be hopefully pretty close to him. If we it. beat them, I mean, presuming they don't lose before then and we win every game, if we beat them and it goes down to nine, you think mm, that's not that's not too much. But I, I just don't see us catching them. Yeah. But let's try. NYC villain, uh, he says, I feel like Adoma hasn't got enough credit for Sunday given Jack Grealish's performance, took an absolute beating from Jenkinson and Ndoy nearly the whole game and was still able to score with a clever finish. I think he does get the credit. As I said, I don't think he's actually been at his best recently. We discussed it a bit yeah. earlier, so I don't want to go over old ground too much, but I think he does get the, he does get the credit. The fans, the fans love him. Yeah. He's a fan's favourite. And he, he knows how to milk it. He loves his dancing and his celebrations and stuff. He he's a good celebrator. He's a doma. When he stood on the hoardings yeah. after he'd scored, that that must just be the most incredible feeling. I'd love to know what he felt like. Yeah, I mean, you've just missed a penalty up there, and didn't you? I've scored one as well, Tom. Yeah, that's not just focus on, <laughs> it's not just focus on the negative. Uh, any more for any more before I get onto a few questions? Uh, it's probably worth discussing the Villa view, as well as that's who we are representing. Oh, should we do that? Yeah. A little bit. We did have an interview planned for tomorrow, but unfortunately, that's had to be postponed. This is why we never announce who who we're doing and stuff like that, just in case things don't happen. So that's been postponed, and hopefully, we'll get a new date in the diary soon. Fan cams was our most watched video for a very long time. Yeah, a lot of. I think it's over twenty k. Twenty three. Is it twenty three now? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and Adam's Adam Wright's speech at the end. For anyone who doesn't know, Adam suffers with it, having a having a stammer, and he's worked so hard over the last few years, and really like come out of his comfort zone to do fan cams, like he's wanted to do them for ages. And this season, he's plucked up the courage to do it. So fair, fair play to him. And he's everything he says at the end is spot on. And he, I've seen a few people say it makes the hairs on the back of their necks stand up, and it, and it really, really does. It. I thought at the time when he was doing it, this is this is brilliant. Yeah. If you're listening to this on on iTunes and you're not really a YouTuber, I would implore you to go out and watch watch the fan cams from. Birmingham City because yeah, it's, it it's a really nice especially especially Adam's piece it's, it's, it's inspiring so yeah, yeah. fair play to him go. he's gone through a lot of obstacles to, to get to that stage to be able to do it so I've got, I've got a lot of respect for him another positive uh, bit of news from the Villa View is that we went over 10,000 YouTube subscribers so a huge thank you to, to yeah, every great. one of you that, that subscribed it's it's really unbelievable yeah we've been limping towards it <laughs> for a while to be fair but that the Blues games obviously tipped it yeah. over the edge I think we picked up like 120 new subscribers or something yeah. on uh, on Sunday so that so that's great Although there's 10k subscribers but we don't usually get 10k views unless it's fan cams no so it'd be nice if all 10k people watched but all we're great together. we're grateful for what we do get because yeah. we never envisaged it getting to this stage and obviously personally I've had a lot of good stuff happen to me mm-hmm. off the back of it nothing good to as, me as well Tom's you, Tom's, wait, Tom's waiting I get to he's, sit next to Dan he's, he's still so, waiting you yeah. played a Villa Park I played it yeah that's, that's true. true that was before you were doing this though that is true uh, and uh, 10,000 subscribers we're, we're not entirely sure actually what it means for us no. in terms of working with YouTube but we are going to explore those so Hopefully, we're, we're bronze members now. We whatever are. that, whatever that means. Technically, we are. Well, not in technically, we yeah, are. We are bronze members. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to explore that and see see what else we can do and, and try and think up some more fun things. What silver member? What do you have to get to to be a silver 100, member? 000. Oh no, we're not going there. Anytime so tell soon. your friends. <laughs> yeah, please. <laughs> um, right. We need someone to create like a. Another ninety thousand YouTube accounts for us, and just add them on. I'll get on it. Yeah, I've got nothing else to do. Um, uh, another member or former member of the Villa View, Matt Lynch. Always nice to see Lynch. Uh, he was he was there on Sunday, and uh, apparently his facial hair was a talking point. It's a shocker, absolute shocker. It's a bit wispy, isn't it? It's not even that it's wispy. He's basically, and he said this himself. He can't grow. The, if you're watching on the video, he can't grow it on the side of his face. Yeah. So he's decided to just give up that. And just try, and he's gone for a goatee. I can't, a David other, Brent goatee. Other than Rafa Benitez and David Brent, I'm not <laughs> sure who has a goatee uh, anymore. Beppe DeMarco. In fact, I'm not even sure David Brent's got one anymore. Yeah, he's, he's long gone. I do know you talk yeah. about. He's long gone. 
Get rid of that goatee, Lynch. I was in EastEnders once. Were you? Yeah. As a kid? Yeah. What did you do? Who did you play? Were you a Mitchell? A Mitchell sibling? <laughs> no. no. I uh, I had to look after Janine's dog. Do you remember Terence, the tiny little I dog? I don't watch EastEnders. I don't like it. I mean, it. this was... I don't watch it anymore, but this was... Well, this was Just one episode. 15 years ago. One episode. Yeah, like 10 seconds. I got is, paid a is fiver. Is show reel? By the doctors. Oh, I don't have it anymore. A fiver? Oh, no, no, as in oh, on screen. Well, I think yeah. you earned a fiver from doing that. I got arrested in the bill as well once. Yeah, Tom. Yeah, no. You've uh, a star. All kinds of things we didn't know about you. I'm a star. Anyway, let's get back to Matt Lynch's facial yeah. hair. So you're a, you're a shave it off. So no, it. Let us know in the comments what you think, but it's got to go. No one has a goatee anymore. I can't grow any facial hair. I was going to ask you that. Similarly to Matt, so I go for the clean shaven look. Yeah, you've, you do the right thing, Tom. Yeah. I don't think a beard would suit you anyway. Do you not think? Not with that dead hair. <laughs> I'd have to change the whole of my face. Yeah, I don't uh, think your wife would like you with a beard either. She, she doesn't like. No. Even when I get a little bit of stubble, I, yeah. I call it stubble. I can see it. I can see because it's not. You've not shaved today, clearly. Yeah, it's a bit patchy. It's oh, like a bit here. It's like a bit of a bit of a mutton chop going on there on <laughs> the side. I wish I could get no, a not a full chop. one, I, but I, the shape I, of a mutton chop. Yeah, coming through. I get nothing on the cheeks, yeah. and then nothing in between the um, where the goatee would be and the sideburns. To be fair to Matt, he is quite young, so if puberty begins. He's still got a chance for nah. you. For you, you're not getting it. It's not happening. Nah, Matt's think, still got a chance. I, I, no, I don't think Matt has. Uh, Dave Alford says, if you could recall one villain you have seen play uh, to ensure we got promoted, who would it be? Good question. That's a great question, isn't it? Because oh, I wouldn't change anything at this, the moment. This is what I found so hard. I was like, I don't want to take anybody out. I have gone with one. I've who gone, gone with, with Dwight York. Just, I don't want to take Hogan out there. I, I don't want to take Hogan out it, particularly. But if you were to change, sub. if you were to change anyone, I think to have Dwight York in that team. Oh, I do. Great. Just because I love the man, I probably just have Ian Taylor within the squad somewhere. I knew it was going to be Ian Fast. Taylor. You're so predictable. He's my favourite ever player. Oh my goodness! Change the record down. Either him or I'm trying to think. Of any decent right backs that we've had. Although I still, I think Elmo does a job quietly without without. I mean, I was going to say without standing out, but obviously he stood out the other way when he smashed the ball into the goal. Who does he? Dela Cruz in the top corner. Good player, Dela De Cruz. Good player. I can't think of anyone. I, I, I really right. I really like this team I really like that first 11 at the moment yeah. with the interchange yeah. of Bjarnason and Yedinak in the anchorman role I really like that team I'd probably have tails have tails in the squad of course you would uh, Adam Hillyard if we don't get promoted are there any players that will be snapped up um, and go up to the Premier League without us there's plenty that could be I think so yeah as I, think, as I say Chester is a Premier League player Hurahan potentially gets his uh, gets a chance in the Prem I think he'd stay yeah, at Villa. <laughs> but uh, yeah, okay. Well, we won't be having Johnston anymore if we don't go because I think he'll get a prem move. Yeah. Uh, I think. I don't know. The thing is, like, I think Chester could play in the Premier League, but is is anyone going to come in for him mm. and pay what we'd probably want? I'd, around, I'd guess around fifteen million for for Chester. Is anyone going to come in and pay that? Mm. I think we could. There's a chance even if we don't go, we could keep the squad together because I don't. I don't see Grealish leaving Villa anytime soon there's talks of new contract at the end of the season for him and he genuinely loves Villa so I don't see I don't know I don't know Johnston would be the main one for me mm. he'd be got he'd be going to get a Premier League move yeah yeah what about you well uh, yeah I think I think Hurraham would certainly deserve and probably be courted for, for a Premier League move even Snodgrass would I was going to say Snodgrass as well I think he likes it at Villa Albert Adoma potentially he's never played in the Prem that's the thing and he's not he's kind of the wrong age. Well, yeah, it's a it, bit the same with Chester, be, they're kind this, of the wrong age. I feel like this would be, it's now or never for Adoma a little bit. But he had the chance to play in the Premier, he could have stayed with Middlesbrough and he wanted to come to Villa. Yeah. So, sure. yeah, I'd, I'd just Johnston. Fair enough. Uh, uh, Richard Skidmore, oh, excuse me, uh, appreciate we have to go up, but this is the most I've enjoyed Villa for some time and the atmosphere at Villa Park is amazing. Need to kick on, but also savour this feeling. Uh, me, me and Chris Dolan spoke about this a few weeks ago, um, how important it was to enjoy the ride. Yeah, that's true. It's massive, isn't it? When you think how miserable Villa Park was a few years ago, it really was the factory of sadness. Yeah, I was so sad every time I was going there and it was just a numb feeling of just expecting to lose. I go there now and expect us to win. And that is nice. I've seen a few people say, I want to stay in the championship because we win games. I, I don't want to stay in the championship, but I get what, I get what they're saying. Yeah, it is nice seeing us win. The sentiment. But I, I want to get us back to the big time. I'd like to see us winning in the Premier League. That'd be quite nice. Yeah. Uh, Laurie Jones, which player would be the biggest blow if he got injured today? Uh, he's listed 
uh, or she could be uh, Terry Grealish Snoddy Hogan Johnston Gabby but then put lol no you didn't put that I didn't on. put lol no Johnston would be a huge loss at this stage because we haven't got even got steer yeah as backup we've proved well, and actually we didn't really cope very well without Terry Grealish is on the form of his life so you wouldn't want to lose him I still think Chester I think Chester yeah he's the because he doesn't get injured so we don't actually know what life's like without James Chester. No. Because he's played every minute in the league since we've, since we've had him. So I'd probably be inclined to say Chester. Yeah. It's tough. Uh, I'd have to go with Alan Hutton. Uh, no, I, I, I honestly don't know. I agree with you. I don't want to change uh, a winning formula at the moment. None of those players, I wouldn't want any of them to get injured. Biggest blow, I, I think I agree with you. Johnston, because of Jed Steer. I talk a lot of sense. Not, not being around. Ollie Baines, um, is Snodgrass, uh, does Snodgrass have the best left foot in the championship? Hashtag love Snodders. Please. I mean, I don't know I every left foot in the no, championship. No, I don't. I can only think of the two in our team. Because there's only two playing who are left footed in our team. Yeah. Snodgrass and Horahan. John Terry. Horahan would probably be up there. Terry's not left footed. He's just, we very, talked he's about just very before? good with his left foot. He's both footed, really. Yeah. He's naturally right foot. Okay. We've we definitely talked about that. I before. can't think of another left foot. Held Costa's left footed, isn't he, for Wolves? He's a good player, although he's not had a great season through injury. For Wolves, See, yeah, I think that's probably fair. Snodgrass probably yeah. got the best left foot. To coin a John Gregory phrase, he's got a left foot that could open a tin of beans. Nice. He said that about Hitzelsberger when, when we signed him. We should use that more. Yeah. Uh, Victor, at Vic Ramsey 85 what's happened to Andre Green? Doesn't seem to be able to make the 18. From first team regular and goal scorer, now doesn't make the substitute bench. He should at least be on the bench. He's been fit for nearly a month easily. I think there's a difference between being fit and being match fit. So he probably hasn't... He must not be up to speed. Because Bruce likes him. Bruce was playing him mm-hmm. towards the end of last season and the start of this season. Green was in the team on merit, so Bruce obviously likes him. He'd be a nice option to have off the bench because I've said we could do with that injection of pace off the bench, but I think they're just taking it slowly with him. He had a bad injury. The team's winning. There's not a, a need to rush him back, but I'd like to have him back in the 18 soon. But I think they're just—I think he's had a couple of knocks as well in training since he's come back as well that have slowed him down, I believe. So, yeah, decent question, but I'd... I'd don't think you can put him in if he's not match fit. It's tough to get into the squad at the moment, isn't it? I mean, if we if we went a little bit more attacking, maybe he'd find himself on the bench, but Keenan Davis uh, yeah, he's not ahead, even on the bench. ahead of him as well. Dean Caffrey, if we do go up, what transfer policy should we adopt? Experience or go for young and hungry or maybe the foreign market? For me, it seems like ooh, all three. I yeah, think, you I, need a mix. Yeah, You can't just have one policy. I don't think for a transfer policy... We should be looking at Polish. Polish. Okay, Mr. Bond. Thank you. Uh, we should be looking at young and hungry because I think we've got that coming through our our own academy. So I'd probably knock that one out. But uh, yeah, you need a little bit of Premier League experience. Although we can't kind of have that in the squad at the moment. Yeah, but we've got people who've got Premier League experience that I don't think could play in the Premier League anymore. Yeah, as well. That's the other issue. If you, you'd need a couple of experienced Premier League heads in there, but you have to make sure when you're signing the old heads that it's the right old head and they're not coming for a paycheck, like. We signed Lescott to be an old head, and that was a disaster. Mm. But then, just I'm not saying we're going to sign him, or we should sign him. But then you sign someone like Gareth Barry, who's good off the pitch, good on the pitch. It's kind of those, those kind of players that, that you need. But you need the right mix in, a, in transfers. And I think, it, as we discussed last week or the week before, if we go up, we'd need a lot of additions to the squad. Because mm-hmm. I think this squad would find it tough in the Premier in the Premier League at the moment. I want to finish with this one, uh, Jake. Uh, at Surrey Villain I'm finally able to buy my first season ticket but have no one to buy it with play the little little violin there it's very nice <laughs> no it's not very nice was it I don't know where that came from sorry Jake where would you recommend a lonely Villa fan go to buy their season ticket I do think that that should have some sort of violin in the background maybe Rollo will sort it out but he won't I can only say Holt End Upper because it's the only place I've ever really sat. Yeah, That's my seat, been my seat since I was seven. There are a few uh, suggestions on Twitter, so uh, I'm sure, Jake, you'll find your home. Yeah, avoid Aston Radford at all costs, though. He made a suggestion to sit near him. I'm, he goes on his own, although I'm going to Fulham with him on, on Saturday. He knows I'm only joking. Oh, my mum won't like that. I know, but she, did, she, didn't, she wasn't forthcoming. You snooze, you lose. She hasn't got a reference number. Oh, no. So I couldn't get her a ticket, could I? Oh, no. Is it I'd too like late to, for I think it sold out 4,000 villains going on uh, going on Saturday. Oh, I mean, you can find them on, on Twitter. I'd, I'd like to do something really outside really. of football with her if I can. Right, OK. <laughs> OK. She Goodness can, she me. She cancelled on Valentine's Day. Well, she was on holiday, mate. Uh, I know, so she cancelled. Yeah. On Valentine's Day. Right, well, Valentine's let's finish mom. it there. Let's finish it yeah. there. Come on. OK. 
You could do the outro. I'll treat you. Oh my goodness! Off you can't chuck me under the Off bus. You go. Do the outro. Well, let's. I just want to say thank you again to all of those who have subscribed and who listen and give us reviews on iTunes as well. It means so much to the channel. As you can see, we're we're now. As I say, <laughs> you were talking. I wasn't even listening. <laughs> I was looking at a blank wall rather than listening to, listen to you. Listen to me. Well, let's call it a day then. Make sure you comment on uh, on on this video. I can't even remember what we've talked about. What we've asked for comments on reviews on iTunes. Yeah. Well. So this is my, isn't my outro though so you carry on you've absolutely like. thrown me under the bus here uh, we're going to do a, a full and preview in this booth it's coming up in the next 15 minutes so that'll be out uh, Friday afternoon I imagine yeah podcast Friday morning yep. we hope yeah if there are any transfer issues yes that's no, we're certainly you're struggling with this shall I take over yeah go on you finish yeah. it off it's what you do if you could subscribe to the channel with your post notifications on that would be absolutely brilliant obviously we've hit a good landmark it'd be nice to hit the next rung on the ladder yeah so to speak as well comment below with your thoughts on this podcast and villa in general at the moment and yeah that's it thank you very much for listening or watching whatever medium you've chosen for this podcast don't know what day we'll be back next week hopefully a little bit earlier because we don't like leaving it as late yeah, to do the podcast it clashes with everything a bit so back next on as a game on tuesday so we'll do it after that i would think uh, yeah, hopefully see some Villa fans at Fulham on Saturday. Come and say hello if you see me. I love talking to all you Villa fans, especially people that watch the Villa View as well. It's always a pleasure to hear that people are enjoying the content. So thanks for your support of the Villa. Of the Villa. If you enjoyed that video, why not watch another? Click the video choices on screen now to go and watch them in full. Be sure to subscribe to the channel by clicking our logo there on the left. Easy peasy.